Good evening. The topic I'd like to uh, discuss with you this evening is leadership and the mind. As Radio 4 very helpfully announced this morning, there's been huge advance in recent years in our understanding of how the mind organises itself. And I'd just like to uh, take a, a couple of slides uh, to, to share some of that with you. So, uh, basically, if we take the upper level of our minds, the cerebral hemispheres, we see that it's divided into four different cores in diametric opposition. Over in our sort of frontal left, we have a series, a, cl a cluster of functions for linear logical analysis, which enables us to do short-term tasks, uh, very task-focused, and verbal reasoning. Um, and this evolved in order that we could go on hunting parties and chase our, our food. Um, today, we tend to use it more for chasing profits. Uh, and, and that is the sort of Western model uh, that has been the sort of heroic leadership model which has dominated our thinking. Diametrically opposed to that, in the uh, rear right quadrant, we have um, horizon scanning uh, capabilities uh, where we look at a wide network of different um, information from different modules. Uh, it's very much parallel processing. It's not one linear line of reasoning. It's multiple lines of parallel processing. And this gives us the capability for uh, generating ideas for the long term and solving complex problems. But it's also for managing relationships. Um, so th these tend to uh, act in opposition so that whilst you're busy task focused, you can also see uh, by scanning the environment who's looking at you for dinner uh, in the evening. On the other axis, we have um, this quadrant, which uh, specializes in access to the frameworks of thinking that we develop our for ourselves to give us the sense of consistency and stability so that we can predict the future. We've built these frameworks for ourselves, and they can, of course, prove when the environment changes to be no longer uh, valid. So we have another quadrant which constantly challenges the status quo um, by generating new ideas about how the world is looking today. And uh, these ideas are then selected, and it causes a certain amount of instability. So each of us have all of these functions um, competing with each other uh, in order that we can um, move forward evolutionary. So I would, I would like to put this across as if each one of us has an internal management committee. Uh, we have a CEO function uh, leading the competition. And opposite, we have an HR function leading cooperation. We have a uh, COO function providing our structure for our thinking. And we have a creative director uh, coming up with innovative ideas for the future. But uh, the research in, in neurosciences has shown that one of the most important uh, functions is the uh, function that le uh, links all of these together, the integration networks. Uh, and we have uh, networks which give horizontal integration of these functions. It also goes down to our visceral uh, limbic system where our, our passions, our values are, are protected. And there's a, a network called the mirror neuron network, which enables us to link up to the minds of other people. And it's this area which is causing a lot of interest at the moment. So my predictions for uh, themes which will emerge during the 21st century for leadership are firstly this function that I've called chairmanship. Um, how do we integrate all of these different perspectives so that we can actually evaluate problems from different mindsets. Um, the whole area of connecting using these mirror neurons to the minds of other people give us the possibility uh, to form teams where there's much more uh, connectivity between the participants. And if you get a, a positive ratio of uh, greater than five to one, according to the research, you, you can form a, a real sort of a collaboration of uh, mental uh, mindsets. The area of mindfulness is uh, growing enormously. There was the, the first international conference in Cambridge this year on mindfulness in the workplace. 
And this uh, enables us to uh, manage more effectively the spotlight uh, that we use for looking internally at what we're doing with our mind and externally. I think another area, I mentioned the limbic system and values, this is where your, your passion and, and, and what you really will protect is, is managed. And I think there has to be much more a consideration of are the values that you as an individual hold congruent with the organizations that you work for? Because this is where the passion to actually bring about change is going to come from. And I think uh, it's very important that we learn to interpret metaphors. And also research has shown that a lot of good ideas come from your dreams. So this redefines what we mean by dream teams. And so my final slide is um, a li little bit challenging for you, uh, which is that we have to integrate the paradoxes of competition and cooperation, stability and instability, in increasingly nuanced ways. And so that I believe great leaders of the future will be masters of the fine art, enabling organizations to emerge at what uh, uh, the scientists call the edge of chaos. It's, it's a fine balance that you have to find between stability and instability, uh, but you don't want to go beyond. Thank you very much.